Emmanuel, tell me about your football journey so far. You've played in France, England, won the Nations Cup. You also played in Israel. How do you describe your football journey? Uh, I would say it, uh, it's been successful. And, um, you know, football comes with challenges as well. There are ups and downs, injuries here and there. And um, there's a period where I even went for some time without playing football. But uh, those are um the downside of football like for my career side but uh, in all it has been successful what lessons have you learned from the challenges that you faced um the most important thing in football is being disciplined and uh, that's the most cardinal thing when it comes to playing football and uh, i believe each and every football player has got uh, his own ambitions, where he wants to go and what he wants to achieve. What were your ambitions? May I just, from day one, as far as I can remember, football it's, it's always been my life. So I, o I always love challenges. I love to put myself where I'm not even there, but I know I have to work hard for me to get there. So that's the most important thing. The pinnacle of your career thus far has been playing for Southampton and yet you never really lasted there. Mm -hmm. Where did things go wrong? Um, I'm not too sure really because uh, there was a time I really started uh, enjoying it, playing football there and uh, with time I also went on loan in France, I came back again in England so I think I missed that uh, uh, time just to adapt to the English uh, game, which is the most important, but it's, it's not easy really. But you just need to get there in and there. And especially when the pressure is high, you more or less the team they need points and it becomes more, more difficult. Would you say the move to Southampton came too early for you? Were you prepared mm. for it? Yes, I was actually. I was prepared. I, I believe everything ha happens with uh, time and uh, I, I felt like that was my, my time to go there but I never really actually adapted to the English game. When you look at uh, the trend of Zambian players playing in Europe, especially England, very mm. few have been successful. If anything, there's only been two Zambian players from the time the Premiership started and you're the second one. Mm -hmm. What do you think the country does wrong in terms of preparing the players to go to England, or is it you the players that are a problem? It's not that uh, players are a problem, or, or our, as a country we've got a problem. At times it's just exposure. We don't have a lot of exposure. Back, back then, uh, like four or five years ago, we, we didn't have a lot of uh, exposure, like in terms of in Europe. We are, we are just few players here and there, you, you could easily count. So I believe uh, it's just a matter of time before we start to be recognized worldwide as well. When you look at some of your former clubmates, you've got the likes of Victor Wanyama, Adam Lalana, Sadio Mane. They're still playing at the highest level, and yet you are back in Zambia. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is so? Um, how can I? Uh, I think. Personally, it's just uh, um, like I said before, you have, you have ups and downs in football. And uh, mine, maybe I made one mis mistake, then I went somewhere, and now I came back home. So, but uh, I believe it's not the end. I'm still active with NAPSA, and um, I'm hoping again I'll be going back to Europe soon. How does it feel when you watch those players that you used to play with? It hurts. It hurts because I know even myself I can easily do it. I can easily go back. So it's just a, a bent cave that I've uh, been going through. But now everything is coming back to, to normal. So hopefully, with God's grace, I'll be, I'll be up and running soon. Are you in touch with them? I talk a lot with uh, Victor Wanyama because uh, even back in Southampton, we used to be good friends. So we, we chat. A lot. What kind of conversations do you have with him? Oh, just normal guy stuff, just uh, asking how's family, how's this one, how's what. So, yeah, 
those kind of things. Gladys, how has it been for you to lift up your husband, given the ups and downs that he's referring to? It's been quite challenging. Yeah, because there are certain issues that I can't do on my own. There are certain issues that require him to sort out on his own. So at times where maybe his progress is a bit slow, it would be a bit frustrating on my end. But there's this progress now. So as long as there's progress, it's okay. Yeah. All in all, do you still have the confidence and belief that he could still be a top player? He's only 30. Yes, I do. I actually know before the year comes to an end, we'll be leaving Napsa. Yeah. We'll be leaving Napsa. What will be your destination? Uh, somewhere in Europe. Yeah. But I know we, we're going back to the Premier League. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. What pressures come with uh, being married to an Iman or Uh So, firstly, we're not, I really don't like to put out our marriage out there. I like it to be private. But even with the people who know, or just him being who he is, there, for people who know that I'm his wife, they think, no, okay, they have money. So we're just always going to ask for money. We actually have some people who come and ask for help from here. Do you have the money? We do have the money. So I'm a wealth consultant. So obviously we do have the money. <laughs> he has invested well and he's still investing well. Yes. That actually goes to my next question. Not mm -hmm. too long ago, there were pictures on social media uh, and people had their own interpretations that now he's taken too much to beer, mm -hmm. he's a pauper, he can't even afford rent, and so on yeah. and so forth. How did that affect you? Um, okay, I'm a very spiritual, not a religious person. So at that time, this was actually before he got the contract with Napsa, I knew that there was a big door that was opening for him. So it's not something that shocked me, but even with the picture, from the picture I saw, it really looked photoshopped. And he had sent me pictures of himself at the place where he, um, they were playing the tech ball. He had sent me videos as well, and they looked very different from how he looked in the picture, and because this is someone I see every day. So from the comments, got a bit of positive criticism shared with him. The negative didn't even bother reading. Uh, in terms of the people saying he's a pauper and he can't afford to pay rentals, that's actually very incorrect because we have invested well in real estate. Yes. And we actually plan on opening um, the Imano Mayuka Foundation, a community school, and a soccer academy. So the soccer academy, I think it also answers one of the questions you asked him of the country helping out football players, yeah. So the Soccer Academy, I believe if this won't be implemented by football bodies or the football clubs, we'll have um, literacy classes, financial literacy, yeah, just even um, psychologists who also, because people come from different backgrounds, they have different upbringings, which affect their way of life and their way of thinking. But if you have psychologists, people who can counsel people, it would make it very easy for them to adapt to a different environment. So we plan on helping the future generation through the Soccer Academy, as well as the foundation and the community school. Imano, you are married to a wealth consultant who works for one of the insurance companies. Mm -hmm. What value from that perspective has she brought into your life? A lot, actually. Not only, not only as a, uh, she, she makes everything look calm and simple as if uh, everything is like pen and paper or sort of like that. But uh, um, because I share my, my, my thoughts or my dreams with her, we tell her, oh, I want to do this, I want to make this, what do you think of it? I've benefited as well, because uh, she's my wife and uh, we talk, we sit, we talk, we strategize, we, 
not everything will be easy, no, but if you have, uh, if you have a dream, you have to follow or chase after that dream. And let's see how it goes. So I'm on the right track. God will bless for sure. How true is it, though, that you've taken too much to bear? I don't know. I don't really know. You know what? One thing I've come to realize, uh, not only in Zambia, or, but in the world, people criticize people. So most of them uh, want to criticize me. But I understand because uh, I cannot always listen to all the negative part of uh, everything. Any small thing, oh, my yoga like that, my yoga this, it doesn't bother me really. They only, they only motivate me actually. When they are talking more, me, I'm saying to myself, this is a time now to actually work extremely hard. Work extremely hard, like mm -hmm. you did in 2012 when Zambia won the Nations Cup. Definitely. What memories do you have for that tournament? Mm, a lot, actually. If, um, if there is a time that you, I would want to, to go back again, it would be that period of time because I felt like we were a blessed uh, team. The chosen ones, should I, I put it like that? And uh, it, it will forever stay in my heart, really. What will stay in your heart? Winning the Nations Cup or the goal that you scored against Ghana and eliminated them? Uh, should I say both? <laughs> <laughs> if you had chosen to choose one, which one would you go for? Winning the Nations Cup. Because it was for all of Zambia, not just for me alone or the players, no, mm -hmm. but for the country. It was important that we had to do that. Are you able to relieve the memory of that goal against Ghana? How you received the ball, how you played around with it with your foot and finally it was back in the net? Yes, mm -hmm. I, it's more or less somebody actually mm -hmm. thinking it as if it happened yesterday. So it's always there. And I remember after the game, uh, one of my bosses cried. And you made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who, which one is that? At the football association? I won't mention that. <laughs> ah, okay. But how about you? I mean, how was the experience? No, it was great, really. Yeah. It was Ghanaians, really Ghanaians, really. most of them don't like you from that time. I'm sure if you were to go to Ghana, everyone would slap you. Ah, I believe we, <laughs> us Africans, we, we love each other. At the end of the day, it's, uh, it's just football. Mm -hmm. And um, I cannot say that I'm sorry, no? Because when <laughs> we go playing football, it's, it's war. Mm -hmm. We want to win, they want to win as well. So. It's understandable. But after that, Zambia has not been able to replicate the kind of form that we saw. 2012 won the Nations Cup, 2013 the next time the Africa Cup was happening, first round elimination, 2015 first round elimination, and then twice we failed to qualify for the Nations Cup. I believe also the foundation of uh, the team is most cardinal thing. I believe if you start something on top, and uh, you want to achieve it there and then it won't happen it takes time for for example the team that we had we had uh, in 2012 I, most of the guys we used to play from under 20 under 23 but then and senior national team so it was a combined group of uh, uh, junior teams leading up to the national team we just look at uh, we had uh, christopher katongo kalidiro kakonje Mwene, this one, these guys were older and mature enough. And come to think of it today, uh, there's still, we still, we, there's still time, I guess, before we get back to the Africa Cup. Because Do you think after winning the Africa Cup, mm -hmm. Zambia went to sleep? If you speak with uh, the former coach of the Chikolo Polo, Wetson Yurenda, mm -hmm. he says that uh, players grew big-headed and it was impossible. So the success was actually a poison in the sense that um, people took their eyes off the ball, as it were. Uh, I don't know if I can say it, everyone went to sleep now, but most of the guys uh, from 2012, some of them uh, getting older, and uh, we needed uh, something like continuation. You understand? If this one leaves, there's the next guy who's going to jump in. So I don't think maybe everyone got big head I do stuff but I wasn't there so I wouldn't say anything bad about uh, uh, what the coach said or if it was true or not true I wouldn't say that what advice would you give young players just to stay focused uh, be disciplined be humble put God first that's the most important thing wherever we go we, we live we sleep we wake up because of God so 
if you put God first and secondly put family first, everything will work out. If you had another opportunity of going back to Europe or England, how would you do things differently this time? Um, I've matured enough. So I know now, the, should I put it, the, um, the issues which, is, which are needed by, you know, like teams. No, I'm, I'm used to that now. So I know how to handle myself. I know how to handle my body. Why so? Those things come into play as well. So you have to be wise with what you do or what you eat, for example, what you take, what you drink, more like ECT, like that. Earlier on, I asked Gladys about how secure you are in terms of your future, in terms of investments to be specific. Mm -hmm. How secure do you think you are, much as she answered that question? Um, I'm secure, but at the same time, I'm not because uh, I still want to achieve more. So I cannot say, oh, just because I've got uh, uh, properties or we have invested here and there, then that's it. I should just sit down and let everything happen. No. So I'm still striving for more, actually. It's something that uh, uh, we were working on. So hopefully, with, uh, like I said, with uh, God's blessing, we'll do it. Lastly, you still have fans that know you from different parts of the country, including Africa. Mm -hmm. A lot, a lot actually. What is it that you would like to tell them about the new Mayuka? Um, the rebirth Mayuka. Uh, just wait and see. I won't say much, really. I believe in uh, action speaks louder than words. Yeah. So I cannot just keep on saying, I'll do this, I'll do that. It's better I get back on the pitch than show them what I'm doing. I'm glad this this journey that Mayuka is starting again, what is your role in it other than cooking for him and being the wealth consultant that you are even to him? Well, I believe um, as his wife, I'm a helper. So I'm not just helping in the kitchen and advising him on where to invest money, but even on decisions that he makes, I also have to help him in times where he might lose focus or maybe his vision may get a bit blurry because it happens naturally as human beings. You may start something, but then there are challenges that come in. So at the time when challenges come in, that's when I come in and help him go back on track. Thank you very much. You're welcome.